Ó. Oh. <risos> you die, mate? I'm alright. I'm dead. Congratulations. So, what did you say? Now, my phone bloody messed up. That's understandable. Hey, oh, Asher. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Am I audible? No. <laughs> <laughs> then how yeah. did you answer that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so let's go. I mean, um, yeah, Mac and Asher, you have something to say about Big Sky Country and those lifestyles? Yeah. Yeah, Mac said that. Um, that he that, that you said that you yeah. used to like the city more, and and that was how I yeah. felt as well. But um, because I went to college in a in a rural town, I kind of realized I like that better because it's so much more calm. And it seems like everyone's friendly and it's like a hmm. tight knit community. So that's something I really liked. Yeah. And I know that big sky country is set in that type of environment, but so yeah. is uh, Wolf Bride as well. I'm wondering what other book also qualifies as that. I, I, Cause I don't. Really bump. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. It Lives and Baby Bump are both also kind of like the rural environment types of I, books. I, I do like that. I do like that kind of thing, but I hope nothing like that happens in real life with Like It Lives, because that would be a problem. Uh, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. That would, <laughs> that would be like nightmare. Hey, Brad, the only welcome. thing I would like. Hello. How's it going, man? Not too bad. Just can't believe yep. I missed my alarm. Yep, no worries. I'm glad you made it. I hope you got a proper sleep. Yeah, it was long enough. I'll say that. Oh, cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so we're just talking about, you know, Big Sky Country is uh, like the country vibe and how do we really like that much, uh, you know, that environment or that uh, setting in real life. So, yeah, the Astro is just talking about that. She and Mac. Please continue. Yeah, Mac, um, he began that, and um, what we were saying was that both of us kind of, well, both of us like the idea of the city life more, but then after seeing some of the book content um, of the books that are in a rural environment, it looks like a more attractive option now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, this would be... I'm uh, glad you for the, new, the new cowboy look. Is it? Yeah, attainable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just realized and that's also probably going to be like a, a big sky country type of book. Yeah, it's a country book and cowboy book. By the way, um, in um, Big Sky Country, I, I think Sawyer was cowboy, but I don't think Juliet was a cowgirl or something. Asha was definitely the mayor and own the shop but since uh, as we know this is going to be a gender customizable love interest and the main character uh, the love interest is a cowboy perhaps or a cowgirl this is going to be interesting i don't think i have seen any cowgirl love interest in choices yeah and i know me technically, too camilla has a cowboy outfit in one of the bloodbound books so technically yeah. oh yeah, no, yeah that's, that's Oh yeah. yeah, she's not truly really a cowgirl, but it, this is gonna be the first time that it's gonna yeah. be. It's cool that we're gonna yeah. have. see them in action. Actually, like you know what I mean, like actually, like uh, in the setting, if that makes sense. Yeah. Have we th had that before? Like I don't know. I've not read much books. Like you know, like older books. What about uh, Sunkissed? Not right. That book, um, I started the first chapter, but I didn't really, I didn't go farther. I don't know if I should, but I heard that it's an underrated book. Overrated. <laughs> Overrated, actually? Oh, okay. Well, my, anyway. <laughs> um, because I heard that if you don't take the diamond scenes, then it kind of, then it, that, that it makes the story not as enjoyable. Look. Yes, it's like um, 
Is it Nate the love interest? If you don't romance it, don't even try and think. Don't even try and believe you'll try and get any scenes with anybody else. Wow, um, that's yeah. I, I I figured that Nate was was the the favored one because he was immediately shown, and I was like, what? okay, <laughs> I guess this is gonna be the Nate show or whatever, <laughs> like the Ethan show and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. very much. But I I do like the setting of uh, Sunkist. I'm just three or four chapters in. I mean, I do agree with. Uh, what Max said, like, it's kind of net is the push love interest, but I'm sure as we go further, you know, we will get scenes with the female one, who I really like. She's like an environmentalist or something. But again, the environment we have, like, you know, it's also like a huh. beach, small town vibe. Yeah. So, um, what book are you looking forward to the most uh, out of Untamable, Cursed Heart, and um, and Princess Swap, and why? Definitely oh. the Cursed Heart for me. Why? The name itself just screams, like, well, not screams, but oh. just immediately says intriguing and mysterious, but in the good way. And then what the, the small description we had was really, really interesting. Like, it's... It seems like it's going to fantasy type book, but not surrender downhill type. I mean, I don't, I don't mind surrender actually, but now that I've caught up, hopefully not that specific route. So I'm curious to see where that that comes, yeah. where that comes from. The, yeah, the name is intriguing. Cursed heart. That's interesting. It, it actually reminds yeah. me a bit of surrender with the the li and how they currently are at the moment. In a way. Did you find out about that? Because I, I personally, I don't know anything about Cursed Heart or um, Untamable. Oh, no, I, I was referencing. I was just referencing Surrender's ally to the actual name of the story. Oh, I see. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah. So, what about you two, Ashra and Matt? What you're looking forward to the most out of these three new books? Or you can also talk about. The night book and the supernatural book, like, though we don't know their name. No. Oh, I didn't know about that. I'm gonna have to look no. at the choices insider because I'm only aware of Untamable and Cursed Heart. Oh, that's a right blog now. post. That's a blog post, not the insider. The recent blog post. If you search up choices blog post on uh, any yeah. Google or Chrome, so you will get their website, and the recent one is about that. So it's a New Year blog post, I think. Do you know? What? Save oh. use time. I'll I'll have a look now for you. I'm I'll actually on the page right now, so I see they have a a, a new January 14th blog post. I think that's really cool, though, because you you guys are talking about a new uh, newer books that I don't know anything about. So I was like very interested about that, but I I would love to see something that's supernatural or sci-fi like um and to answer your question earlier about which book i'm looking most forward to it would be cursed heart because i like the magic it sounds like it might be a magical type of book it's also supposed to be a little steamy as well i I saw that there was a the the little preview or um, you know the writer's team w- where they talk about the yeah. book and yeah. what they're trying to make it um, the lead was or I don't know if she's lead or not but one of the writers was saying that they were trying to make it like a steamy type of book so even though it, I, and I don't mind that either anyway but I do like that more than uh, than Untamable because I have a feeling Untamable is just going to have a lot of stereotypes I don't know I mean like maybe it's it, it could end up being good, but I just feel like it, it's going to be like that. Those novels that you see about like that cowboy that <laughs> that's very rebellious. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but yeah, there's a lot of stories like that out. Like there's a lot of stories like that, so that's why I was thinking that it's that it's probably going to be like this, and that I'm more interested in Cursed Heart. Interesting. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm not knocking anyone who's interested in Untamable, though, because 
I do also like the rural environment. It, it's mm -hmm. a lot nicer and calmer. All right, so Curse Heart 2. Uh, what about you, Mac? Which one? <clears throat> um, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I'm here, I'm here. Yes. Um, so which one? Yeah. Um, you can't really judge a book by its cover right now. Oh no, people are going to go back and take what's there now. But like, to so far, I, I just want to see a supernatural book. So I'm probably this month looking forward to the supernatural book that they've got coming out. So, oh, the night book. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, Cursed Heart, Night Book, those are the definitely interesting book like supernatural stuff as uh mm -hmm. mac asher and brandon said i'm looking forward to those but just because you know untamable we're gonna get it first you know way before those books are you know will be released and also you know like uh, like i said big it, the cover looks like big sky country and i think i just personally find the country it's pretty relaxing and uh interesting yeah. story type can come out so I'm looking for a timetable. Also, like depending on this, you know, like a country, steamy book, and uh, gender customizable MC and a single love interest. I just want to see that combination of like a, how it plays out. Actually, I, I mean, I loved Sora, Juliet, and all the other there. So I just want to see how we actually do with a single love interest, and if it's actually going to be a proper cowboy or cowgirl. How is it going to play out? I'm just going to be really interested for that, or whenever they release the faces or the trailers, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the, um, how the love interests look at look like. It's making me think that um, it's going to be like the shipwreck situation where you have all the time with that love interest, so you get to have a stronger bond with them. So that's one really good positive aspect of those single love interest books. I think that'd be pretty good, actually. I like I like what they did with shipwrecked and, and what they're doing with work the dead, the little the little bonds, like the strong bonds, and then of course the the actual moral choices in Wake the Dead, which kind of actually emphasizes on the actual name of the book choices, where your choices have an impact. So then they I think they need to implement that that, that a bit more. Yeah, I, we were talking about that earlier. Not only do I really love that book, but it. it the, dynam the, the dynamics of it is very different and you have the point system, your choices actually matter and it actually makes people feel emotional too sometimes. Or, I mean, some players, I know I felt kind of bad when I chose to not take you know, Angel's parents to the colony. <laughs> so it's, to me, I like that type of book because it has consequences, but it's also a good book for replaying yeah. to see how different it is. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I said I, I just spared them because if they do go loose, I'll take them down myself. Okay, so uh, that was actually a question I was about to ask you because you almost said so. Uh, you saved. So, what was your thought process? Like, why did you save them? I mean, I guess everybody was against it because it's like you know these are zombies, but I mean they they were still people at one point. You for some reason. People still can't feel attached, so you know it's as long as they're under lock and key, they can't really be a harm. And that will be also a bright side is if they were to die under different circumstances, say back, you know they, 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 you know they attack the assailants. At least they go down like heroes, you know. I mean. At the end of the day, I mean, you can bring them back as colonists and they go out as heroes. So either way, they'll, they'll die either way. But they're under lock and key. Well, Angel made sure of it, so... And, you know, I trust her, so... It's worse than, you know, the alternative. Yeah, because so, there's so much loss that it would be meaningful for Angel to have her parents, even though they're not even alive anymore. Just like how you can retrieve that letter for Eli. And to be honest as well, you, and you never know, there might even be a, I would doubt it, because it's, you know, it's just a standard walk, uh, Walking Dead type book, I guess, but th there could even be a cure at the end. So, you know, the choices, there might be something at the end where it reflects all your choices 
and that will affect certain things. So like maybe there'll be a cure and maybe Angel's parents can be thingy and then she'll get her parents back. Or because you spared them. I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. I just oh, thought that Wow, that's actually a lot to think about because yeah. I like that idea, but it, the one thing that I noticed was when we were reading the descriptions of, well, actually, you guys probably, yeah. I mean, what chapters are you on for Wake the Dead? I'm on the, I think I, I'm all caught up on the latest one where we uh, try and make a deal with the Raiders. I'm curious oh. what that's going to go, actually. Yeah, me too. I'm excited for that. So you're on chapter one, like I am. Yeah. To be honest, the way I think about it, I think that may have another moral choice in that when we get to it. I think it might be a case of if you say the right things or something, you can make an alliance with the Raiders to go against the tower. And obviously that'll be a moral choice. Or maybe or maybe either that or knowing the Raiders, it'll be kill someone or do something for us and we'll join you don't do it, and we'll either kill you or leave you. So it might be kind of that kind of thing. I'm th- I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of big moral choice there, and it will affect how the end of the game comes out because you still got to go against the tower, which are twice as strong as the raiders. So and then obviously the solstice. So that's one thing I like about big moral choices. You think about what impacts they have in the long run. Gets your gets your mind going all over the place. Yep. Those are some really good takes because it looks like now and. From chapter 11, you're having a very, very big shift because you have those antagonists and now you're kind of, it's it's different now or a little bit neutral, but they're still antagonists in a way. So I'm wondering if if we do end up, you know, having a hard choice. I think the people like that, the Raiders, they would make you do something for them um, just to prove that you're worth it. Like, I feel like it would be something like that. And when it comes to the tower, I could see that happening. I could, I could see the raiders and maybe other colonies possibly that are going to be, you know, introduced later if they are, um, like all joining together against, yeah, having an alliance against the tower. We don't really know a lot about Marcus Blackstock though, but that's something I, I can see as like being a big battle too other than the solstice. Maybe like before the solstice or goes or it goes into it, like the solstice comes mid battle and it just turns into a whole chapter of chaos. It, it would be because, you know, I don't really know a lot about how Marcus is, but I'm wondering if, if he would use the opportunity, the, the chaos to Good actually chat. go after. Yeah. Like I'm wondering if it's going to be that, or if it's going to happen before, or if they're even, it could even be that maybe they change their minds and that, that maybe there's a a zombie threat that's even worse than they thought. And maybe they all end up having to contribute in a way. I'm wondering if even that could happen, that that would be cool, but I kind of think it's not going to happen because of the way that Marcus Blackstock is. But what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say the way, with the way he is, he seems like, a really, well, not obviously that great, but it seems like some kind of a strategist. So I, w- I don't think I'd put it past him that he decides to try and attack the same time as the Solstice. But it's also a case of how would he attack? Because I, as much as he cares not for anybody else's life, I don't think he'd throw his own soldiers straight into the into the chaos, especially when there's like tens of thousands of zombies. He'd obviously try and do some sort of ranged attack or something, or maybe try and yeah. do clear out. That's a tough one because I think he's the type of character. So he is very calculating and um, a, a good strategist, but I, I think he is the type of person who doesn't really care about life. Like, he doesn't have a, a high regard for human life. So I think that he would probably sacrifice just to get back at um, the traitors, you know, the new colony. It, yeah, that's yeah, something that think about i'm not really sure if that's the type of character he is but um he kind of did something like that so it's making me think that he would sacrifice people just to get his goal or to achieve it i won't put anything past him after everything he's built up and done 
he 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 won't just you know lose it. So I won't put it past him. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be really interesting to see. Like I, I think it would be evil in the story if he ends up actually using the solstice to attack others. <laughs> That would be like an ultimate blow, but and who knows? You know, I'm very excited to see what's happening for the next chapters. It, it's on a break now. I mean, I'm I'm surprised too because I had no idea that this book was going to be on a break. I, I yeah, kind of I'm... wanted it to be where they announced that it was going to be on a break, like maybe a week before they said it was going to be on one, rather than just saying it right away and then having the break. <laughs> You know, I think it. I think it comes back not next week, the week after, in the start of February. So I think oh, two so weeks it's later it comes back. So early February. Yeah, I think so. That's better than I thought. For some reason, I thought it was just going to be released like late February because I was thinking that the team needed more time for everything. But if it's going to be released at that time, that's good because I don't have to wait as long as I thought I did. I just asked a question as well. Who was your love interest in that book? Like, everyone's. Who was everyone's love interest? Undecided. <laughs> Ooh, I love those types of questions. <laughs> Out of all four, who would you choose? Like, uh, who so... is my love interest at the moment? Or, like, uh, I have to pick one. Uh, I'll, I'll be lenient halfway through. I'll say love interest at the moment. Interesting. I will let Ashley go first, and yourself. You can go also. I'll be last. <laughs> what, what were you saying? Um, who goes first? Oh, I said I'm going to be go going last. I mean, Astra, Mac, and Brandon, you can go first, because I think I need to think in my mind who I'm going to pick. Yeah. So, yeah, I said you guys I'm going to do as well. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm right now. I'm definitely um, mostly interested in Shannon. Why? She's my favorite because she's a person who has a lot to offer, but she doesn't see it. And it seems like the more the main character bonds with her and they go through challenges together that she becomes stronger. She's kind of, she reminds me a little bit of Nia in that way, where they're both like the innocent type of characters, but they get stronger later on. And that's something I really like to see. I, I guess I have a soft spot for that type of love interest. So at the moment, Shannon's my favorite. Um, I do like Angel though, but I, I guess I don't, I, I don't know if, I would probably do a, a replay of that book and choose Angel just to see how different it is, but definitely Shannon, um, she's the one that has my heart in this book. And I also really love how she's like a, an intellectual, like you have those scenes with her where she talks, she gives you all this knowledge about what's going on and um, the the current research on the zombie problem, or like the, I I just really like that about her. That um, she's like the type of character that is an, uh, admirable to me. So I guess that's why she she's my favorite one. Yeah, I'm, uh, I was at the start of the book, like when as I call, I got tied between Angel and Shannon. I don't get me wrong, I really like Angel. I love how she's a loose cannon. Uh, I love her, her knowledge on explosives, and uh, she 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 knows her own strategies in a way. They're they're good because they're different. They're what they're not what you would expect. They're they're unique. So she's she brings a lot to the team. But then I think I'm I'm on Shannon as well. I don't know. There was just something about her. Like when I first like we first meet her at the facility, there was just something about her. Um, like as I learned her. She's she's this sweet, compassionate person, very knowledgeable. She needs to build up her uh, her courage, obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, she's she brings a lot to the team as well. She's really kind, compassionate, and there's just there's just something about her that it gives you like just that soft spot, you know, like the one that you mentioned, you know, the soft spot. 
Yeah, um, because she's, it's like a wholesome feeling, you know, and she's very nurturing. I that's I guess that's what I was trying to say also is that I like the nurturing love interests a lot. So definitely Shannon, she fits that category exactly. And what you were saying about when we first saw Shannon, when she was trapped, I saw her and I was like, this is a character that I want to get to know more, like immediately. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because it, like, it seems like we both kind of have the same um, thing, the same like feeling about this. But then going back to Angel, although she's like my second favorite, um, she, I would like to still see more um, female love interests that are not, um, you know, stereotypical. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed it, but usually when, when there's like a non-customizable love interest that's um, canon female, they you tend to have certain personality types. So I would yeah. like to see more, uh, more characters like Angel. Yeah, I think as well, uh, Shannon gives off vibes of being like kind of the nerdy type of girl. So I remember back in the first chapter, you you get to the med bed, you're like, oh, you're beautiful. It's like, wait, oh, really? No one's ever said that. It's like, yeah. She's like that, she's like that, that kind of nerd scientist girl that no one takes an interest in, which is weird because, you know, she's amazing. She's intellectual. She's smart. She's nice. The whole deal. I she has like she's the whole package actually like gorgeous very smart i and i remember that scene too like the one where we, we where you get to compliment her appearance and she was like surprised that someone tells yeah. her that she's scary. i just thought that was i thought that was really cute but i guess because you know in a in that type of environment in that book <laughs> people probably don't have time to really I mean, flirt as much maybe, or maybe there's, maybe people are like a lot more isolated. So she mm. didn't really get to learn about what people perceive her as. So I, I thought that was really interesting too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, that's a tough question, Brendan. I mean, he, he, that was a curveball. You, you hit me with a hard one. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm going to do an elimination if that's because, you know, when I play, you know, wise and uh like all of them are charming i mean and i mean i don't know if we're gonna have to choose i mean i'm at chapter four so i'm still getting to know the love interest but since they released uh, the character sprites and love interest sprites i think um um let's go over first um uh, first we meet shannon so uh, uh up until this chapter four so for me shannon was leading that part because like you guys said, you know, like the nerdy type or Nia, you know, she's like an innocent sweetheart. Absolutely. You know, so it's always, I mean, you know, it's interesting to, you know, be around those persons. But then on the other hand, you know, you have Troy. Now, I think he's like a male, you know, from Blades, like, you know, goofy character and just, you know, makes fun. I mean, I still remember when, you know, going through the inventory of Angel, if he found some old world stuff and X body spray, he says, "Oh, my man Ellie would be all about X body spray." So that was—I mean—that <laughs> cracked me up. I, mean, I laughed for one whole one minute, and then I, st you know, read continued reading. So, you know, like Troy is a kind of a character and best friend. Now, best friend to love interest tropes are my favorite. So, like, there's one, and then Ellie. I when they showed Ellie for the first time, you know, in the character descriptions. I didn't think I would like Ellie that much, but I think I want to spend diamonds on Ellie, like Dallas in Big Sky. Like I see his struggle, and he has some, you know, past experience that's keeping him there. Um, so I think, you know, it's like exciting to um, sort of interact with Ellie and be in touch with him, and then, you know, so still this, you know, I, I had. You know Shannon at the top, and um, <clears throat> but then I met you know in chapter four Angel. I mean Angel, there's something about her. I mean I'm still not saying Angel is my favorite love interest here. I mean I still think Shannon is the one, or you know I don't think I'm I'll go for Troy because I do have like you know I like Shannon and Tro Angel better than Troy here. In another book, 
if an open heart trial was there, I'd have gone for Troy. But for the Zabuk, I think it's gonna be it can change now in chapter four. Bear in mind. But about Angel, I mean, she's like a hippie, you know, like a, like she's a you know, like in that world, she has a lot of information about old world stuff, just like Troy. Like there are some qualities they match, you know, they're both goofy, and she's like child, you know, she gets excited, and there's something about like how he talks, like. She says, quote, oh, you're looking for little old me? I mean, something about her, like how she dresses up. It just uh, makes me want to learn more about her. It's just really interesting to see like a post-apocalyptic world. Like I really can't explain in words what is it about, you know, Angel. I mean, I do like now, like Shannon also. I did put myself between Shannon and the, you know, zombies when they tried to attack and use the metal armor. But Angel, I think there's just something about her that makes me want to spend more time with her. If I'm going, like, if they ask me to choose, like, hey, choose one person to spend more time. All of them, I would love to, like, there's something to learn from them, all of them. But Angel, I mean, it's just, uh, I took a lot of time because I still can't decide in my mind. But more of the story, I think Angel, is it's going to be for me. If I have to choose one, but I don't want to. All of them are good. Yeah, you know, there is there is something very unique about Angel. She's the type of character that you don't see um, as a female love interest very often. They tend to make those characters overly sweet. So when you see someone like Angel who's very bold, it, it she definitely, she has an appeal. Even with the way her, her character design is, like, I actually really like her clothes, too. It, it looks really cool to me. Like, she seems like a punk rock type of person or even like a hippie too so <laughs> i think i will definitely be replaying so that i could focus on her next time but as of right now my um, love interest rankings would be shannon then it would be angel i think eli is awesome um i don't like troy that much for some reason because i think he's a little annoying but I don't think I would choose um, Eli and Troy. I, but I do think they're great love interests. I, I just think that Eli is like the better one out of the two because he he's it, it makes me want to learn more about why e, um, Eli is the way he is and why he's so shut off. There's like certain love interests that have that um, trope. Yeah. I think you also told me it's called something uh, uh, Wounded Souls. The trope? Yeah. Um, so he's like a... He's kind of like the wounded warrior type of character. He's like... He, he reminds me of Tatum in a way, because at first they're like both rude. <laughs> yeah, Tatum. Oh, yeah. Loved him. Yeah, yeah so he's I that mean, kind of character. And that type of character, I at first I, I tend to not like them, but later on I do have sympathy for them. Of course. But yeah, I mean, Shannon, I mean, she's also a great character. You know, like, uh, I think it's good. In a, it's a kind of a good headache to have. I mean, after going through laws of attraction and open heart where you don't have much of a choice in love interest department, I think books like this or Blades, uh, specifically this one more than Blades, I think. I think it's a good headache to have. Like, you are actually thinking of who to choose because, uh, you know, Shannon is also, like, you know, I, I think uh, I don't now know that after you mentioned like who I'm actually going to choose, but yeah, I mean, it's just, I think I'm going to have to now log in with two accounts now. <laughs> yeah. It, it's getting more difficult because I'm starting to like Angel more. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'll definitely have a replay or I might just play on my other account. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think I should do? Do you think, because I kind of wanted to also post it, an angel route. So do you think it would be okay. better, like, if I just released it after the story ends or while everything is going? Because I feel I like it would be really good. I'd say do it after because doing it halfway means you'd have to restart the book over again and just have to catch up. Whereas if you're at full, you can just do the full route through. No, she has another account, she's saying, like... Another, like parallelly, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just saying overall, yeah. it's still be, it can still be easier to do the full routes instead of half. Yeah, you're right. If, if you could start, like, one thing choices really need to add is, like, I'd say 
not not necessarily chapter select, but maybe like starting from the chapter onwards, certain chapters onwards. Maybe chapter select even, but just because having to play through the whole book can be a bit of a stretch. Like obviously, you know, you play through the whole book, you get everything, but still, I think that would be a good thing, for, especially for doing like different routes and such. Yeah, you know, although I like how they have the restart chapter feature, I do feel like they need a, a selection feature for chapters that you have already read, so that you can go back to that. That would that would be a nice thing to add. But I think you can do one thing. You know, you can choose Shannon Round for your VIP playthrough, and you can have another account for which you can release it uh, for non-VIPs. You know, because we're at chapter four. So you can catch up to chapter four, and then every week, uh, non-VIPs get a chapter. You release that chapter for non-VIPs from the other account you know, a play, and you choose Angel Route. So I think uh, because there are lots of non-VIPs also, so that would be interesting to see, you know, that schedule being filled. I like that idea, actually, because, you, you know, because I have the VIP subscription, I'm not aware of the general schedules, so... I now, you know, I, I was already aware that it was going to be that week that it was that week the dead was going to be released to everyone, but I didn't really like remember it or like actually think about it. So that means in my other account, I don't even have to get that to be a subscription. I could just still actually play the book. So that means I could definitely do an game as well. But um, as having that account, um, that's not VIP versus having my VIP account where I romance Shannon. That would be really cool, though, because I, I'm starting to like Angel more and more. Yeah. Although I do still really like Shannon, and I think she's definitely my number one. Yeah, the dilemma can be solved that way. But, or, or also, you have the option, like, you can take your time. Like, as Brendan said, you know, let it end, and then you can start, like, whatever, you know, you think is relaxing and works for you. What about yeah, Matt? I, well, I don't know. I'm still here, you know? You know. Okay. Yeah, so who is your... Why? To be honest, I don't even... I've been asleep for the last five minutes. I'm not even going to lie. Um, who would I choose? I don't even know. I'm only up to chapter four, because up until then, like, I was reading other apps and that, I'm not going to be honest, but... So far... I, I actually don't know. I, I honestly... Okay, so so you're at that point where you have no idea who you would pick. No. How'd you rank so them? I'm... Like the four ones, like one to three. Yeah. Well, so far, it'd be is it Troy fourth, Eli third. Uh, not my kind of trope. That is his kind of character. Let's be honest. Um, and then it'd be a joint first for I don't I don't even know. Honestly, I don't know because. I like Angel, but I like Shannon, and it's like, I don't want to choose Angel because I don't want to break um, Shannon's heart because of how sweet she is. But then again, I don't want to choose Angel because I don't, honestly, it's it's such a, this is what I like about this book so far, what I've read up to, you know, for halfway through chapter five, <laughs> there's actually good variety there, and it actually makes you think about who you want to choose. This is what I like. And it's like, I don't genuinely, I don't know. I, I could not tell you that all three of these, I do not have a, out of Channon and Angel, I don't know. I, I really, really could not tell you. It's not the hard choice, it's moral, but, you know, yeah. like you can't, no, you just can't choose. No, I, I genuinely I mean, can't. Yeah, I, I don't blame you because they're both very good. They, they both have a lot to offer. They're different, but they're both exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, so Shannon's the one that gives me more of a warm feeling, and then Angel's more of the playful type. So I will say that I definitely do like Shannon a lot, but by a lot, I like her a lot by far. But I do still like Angel, so it would be definitely like if I had to choose like a percentage of one hundred between Angel and. Shannon, it would probably be like ninety percent Shannon. <laughs> can, I, can, I just, can I just put in and say something as well, please? What I like about this book so far, what have I read as well? 
I think this is the first book, in my opinion, where you've actually think about who you want to romance. In all other books, it's quite easy to pick, but like this is what in this one you've actually got choices and stuff. Yes, yes. Like that's why I personally probably a little bit off topic here. I prefer non single love interest books. But that's a different sort of day. But yeah, I like that you had to you I think so far what I've read of it, I'm, I'm not even been spoiling myself or, or anything like that. So far up to chapter five, it's been a really good book, and I'm going to catch up on it. But what I've seen so far has been quite good. And you actually had choices actually matter. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to say. I just want exactly. to mention to a bit more. Like, yeah, especially like... these type of drama books where they're, it's like a serious thing, like a zombie apocalypse. Mm. I think they could definitely do a military or like full on action style book with serious moral choices. I think that'd be really good. Yeah. Wow, I would love that. I, I would I would play that in a heartbeat, actually, if they had if there was a military book. Because that's one of the one, I, that's one of the books I, I, I always wanted. Just hardcore military. Yeah, because I play um um other games like RPGs like that and one for one for example, um that I play, it's also, a, it's a story heavy book, uh, not book, it's like an open world game, but it, uh, it has a very good story and your choices matter. So I would like to see something like that, um, but in the choices app. And it, yeah. the game is like a type game too. So that would be something that would be very cool. And I would love to see like what type of character designs they would have like for the, like the battle suits. I know there's like battle suits and across the void, but you don't really see it. And uh, actually, there's even one in it lives in, in beneath. I think, or yeah, it lives beneath. Like there was a a final outfit that you wore, wore for the fight. So I would like to see something oh, yeah. like that because something that's like new or different. Yeah, it was like a uh, you collected it through. The, it's like those things where you collect them through the book. And then you uh, you're able to get something through at the end. Yeah, uh, that that would be nice too, actually. So if if there was a mil, maybe it'll be like a another survey for the choices players where we could indicate that we want a military book or something similar. That would be very nice, or even like a spy book, I guess. Oh yeah, spy book would be pretty good. I think a base a lot of. A lot of stuff off of spy books because there was a, as we know, our hostel story kind of. Actually, no, that was more of a military one, but you know what I mean. Yeah. What books would you guys like to have in choices? That's an interesting point he brought up, Brandon. Like genres, let's say genres. Um. Uh. Well, first of all, based off what Max said, uh, more supernatural books because supernatural books offer a lot of suspense and. Just a lot of like anticipation, like it genuinely makes you feel like, oh, what's going to happen? What's this? What's this? Like for Queen B, like myself and a lot of other people were like, oh, what's going to happen? You know, it, are we going to find out X did this? Like one thing I loved about Queen B too, it was full of anticipation because there was there was always something new happening. We, we didn't always know that everything, apart from the one obvious fact, which I won't mention, because um, I'm not sure if anyone, everyone's caught up with Queen B. Um, just an audience in general. Um, but yeah, it's like just the anticipation of what was going to happen next. Who who was going to who we were going to find out? Because it was more like enjoyable and anticipating finding out who the minions were. And I don't think I think everybody can agree with that. It, it was more enticing to find out who the minions were than the actual X themselves. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. That's um, true. The anticipation was what did it for me in that book, and I think that's what it does for in most supernatural books. But also, it just offers offers something unique because you know supernatural books you can go anywhere, do anything. Because the idea is it's like fantasy, so you can go anywhere, do anything, and just offer up completely new. I mean, with, with what we're in now, twenty twenty two, you know, there's there's all sorts of possibilities. So I think military. Or spy, uh, supernatural, and then there was another one, but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. I'll, put, well, I'll come back to it. Apocalypse. What about you guys? 
Okay. No, um, no, 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 yeah. Uh, before you guys can more competition books like America's Most Legible, high school books. I'm a sucker for that. And we are already getting a country book, so I'm not complaining about that. But sports, our main character is yep, just about to say that Tom Brady. Something that would be super cool. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay, before I continue, uh, before you continue, okay, I will be um, back very soon. But you know, you guys answer this question and then you know take turn talking about it. And can anyone would like to moderate it until I come back? You know, like just uh, I'll be back. But you know, like time is certain. But you three, like, uh, don't let yourself stop for that. So just uh, continue, and you can moderate after this question. Like, you can either three of you, any any of you can bring up a point and then discuss. Okay, I'll be back. But carry on the conversation. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, sure. So, Mark, you were saying about sports. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think I would just agree with Veneer, man. To be honest with you, I just I just prefer more sports books, to be honest, because any sport books have got. Uh, I don't think we've actually got any choices to be honest. I was going to say, what um, sports books? <laughs> exactly. Just thinking about that, you know, like, I think what's, I think, yeah, yeah, just more sports books, you know, that's all I've written. That's my preferred genre, it's not alongside like Supernatural and just, so that's what actually got me excited, you know, <clears> like, more when it said, um, what is it? In the upcoming blog thing, they said they got more supernatural books. It's like finally, yeah. But yeah, more sports books as well because I don't think we've actually generally got one. So yeah, we really don't. Um, the only thing I can think of is the Thief team and the Elementalists is yeah. is kind of like that. And well, oh. actually, yeah, I think the only um, situation where it's like a sports. Book in a way, hostile, not hostile story. Um, now I'm thinking of the wrong gap there. Sorry, um, high school story, high school story, but you can get to choose what, yeah. I oh, I didn't know that there. because I haven't read that book yet. So, yeah, but I, like I seen some screenshots about like um, on like a game playing field. Uh, high school story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, um, Brandon, what you were saying about, like, wanting fantasy books. So what I think is we have books that are set in a normal world with, like, cities that are actually, you know, that actually exist, like, for example, New York. And then you have books that are set in places that are completely different. Something that's not normal or, you know, find in reality, like fantasy books even sci-fi books sometimes that's like something i would love to see of more seeing like a, a seeing a world that's very unique would be really really nice i think that's why i really like across the void because it was just a different type of world and i also really like nightbound as well because you could you know technically leave the place that you were in i think it's new orleans or something <laughs> i might be wrong where it was based, but uh, it would be nice to see like a new, a new world, a different world. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to like to see more of that. To be honest, I think that's what I liked about um, uh, Nightbound as well. To be honest, you've got. I mean, yeah, I think that's my just my kind of book. To be honest with you, like Nightbound, where you can get, oh, nice one, trim, yeah. Like so much to say about so I mean, come on, man. But, yeah, I think mean, I agree with that. Yeah, what you said about oh, yeah. it. Definitely. Did you want to go, uh, Mac, about like the type of books you want to see? No, I, I think that, to be honest, I've said it about five thousand times, but, like before, like on different podcasts. I think books I want to see. Oh God. Obviously, I know we're not going to get a soccer book. Let's just face that now. It's all American football everywhere, and all oh, any yeah. any activity is literally just American football. Look, I know f- soccer or football, whatever you want to call it, is not the best sport ever, and and, and I know this. But, but why does it always football. always have to be American football? Like, <laughs> like, look, like no, 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 no. I'm not literally no hate towards anybody who likes it or anything. Ameri- no, any American or anybody or rugby. 
but genuinely. Oh no. You think it's okay. of it, um, it's like um in episode of Brandon's read this book. I know I don't like American football, but this book's good. Like um, Operation Quarterback. Operation Quarterback. Yeah, yeah I like that one. That, that was a good one. Good, no, good one, yeah. But like, yeah, this more sport book, more supernatural book. I mean, how many supernatural sci-fi books have we? Not not sci-fi, but not, that kind of book. Like it lives. Like we've got about five in the horror section, I believe. I'm trying to think of uh, what, uh, are there any on yeah. Oh wait, does uh, Groundhog Day don't count? Does it? I don't think it counts. Supernatural does it? No, I don't believe. Oh, well, I don't know to be honest. It might do because I don't want to spoil anything. But you wake up on the same day every day until something's sorted, and then once it all goes correctly, then it, you can just carry on with the rest of your life. And it's like, well, to be honest, I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. You know, I don't know. I really couldn't put a finger on that. You know, but I'm sure they. Yeah. Um, <laughs> could it be classed as sci-fi? I don't think it's yeah. supernatural. Not. No. Uh, I mean, time travel in general does. Well, not time travel, but uh, it does yeah. kind of. It does kind of fall supernatural because it's not really a scientific thing. Like no machines or anything, no. no scientific thing did it. It was all based on the person and themselves. So I guess it could be classed as supernatural. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. There's more books like that. To be honest with you, that's mm. literally what I've got to say. Because I'm to be honest with you, I am actually getting a bit fed up of all the romance books. Like, I know that's what sells, and I get this, and I know it sells, and that's why Pixelbury released more books like this. Oh, well, not just Pixelbury, but I mean, it's like Dream Zone yeah, and uh, Episode. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, and then we're obviously like waiting for books like. Um, what's it called? Waiting for books like uh, Devil's Deal and Dream Zone. That book three to come out. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because. I think not just with choice uh, with episode, but I mean, I think episode are worse for this. Like most of their stories, I don't know about Pixelberry here, but it's like I think it's like with any app though, like romance. We know it sells, but doesn't mean you have to forget about what everybody else likes. But I mean, yeah. episode to be honest with you is just a different book, different app for a different day. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's far from great. Jesus, but yeah. Bit there, aren't we? Yeah, to be honest, more sporty books and more supernatural books. That's what I. I that's what my preference is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, that's, that's really interesting. So I, I personally don't really. I'm not saying I'm an unhealthy person, but I, <laughs> I've never really been into sports. But I do like watching soccer, or. Whoa. I'm kind of confused about because I know some of the the sports names are different in different countries, but um, definitely that like you know like the World Cup that's the type of thing that I would love to watch that I actually like watching. Oh yeah. But in terms of having a a sports book, I wouldn't mind if it was something like that. But I don't want like American football because I don't like that like at all. No. No, because I think if you think of a sport book in any kind of app, like a choices app, like not choices itself, like choices, but with Pixelberry, but like any choose your own story app. If you've got a sport book in the app, you can more or kind of like a love interest and like sports. It is more or less 99.9999% American football, like hands down. Um, what is it? Operation Quarterback. Uh, actually, no, there's actually one on episode. What isn't? I don't know if you've read it, Brandon. Uh, love uh, and love, the love game or something. I don't bloody know. The one with yeah, no. Oh, love uh, is yeah, I think no, that for not the. Oh, God. Think of That's it. Sorry. Show. No. Oh <laughs> God. I'm caught. Yeah. You know, there's books like that, even on chapters. Like, I was going to chapters recently, and there's a couple of American football themed stories. And obviously, yeah. that's I'm not interested in. No. So, I, I would like I to mean, see some actually, like, you know, international sports or something that's not American based. Yeah, I mean, look, 
I get that lots of people like I'm generally no shame, but like I said, it's like if you think of a storybook nowadays, it's like it's American football. Oh, it's American football. Look, it, I know it's because I probably like soccer. I'll just say soccer to ease your mind, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but like, it, it's it, it honestly gets unbelievable. Not to a point where it annoys me the most when I'll not read the book, like you know, like it's got a good plot, like I always say, I'll read it. E.G. Operation Quarterback, which I actually do actually recommend you to read. Really, I think Brandon will say that as well. Oh yeah, I, I know. Uh, you know, I also I I'm not a fan of um, American football at all. Like it's it's just no. it's a very popular <laughs> country, and I know it's I don't know if it's the basketball or. Or if football is more popular in the U.S., but it, it definitely seems to be the one that a lot of people talk about um, and get very competitive with. Yeah, I think. So I, I think, would rather see something else. Yeah, I think as well. Oh, look, I'm going to get absolutely hated for this, but I think American football is just a. I'm not going to say girlier, but a, a more. Oh, American football is soft the version of rugby, English rugby. I mean, well, God, we're going off topic here. But please don't be sick here, please. In, Amer- in a rugby in this country, please don't be sick. This guy dislocated his knee, so we just punched it back in place and he started playing again. Oh my did you God. see that? <laughs> no, seriously, that's what he did. He just carried on with the game. He didn't care. But yeah, I mean, God, we're going off topic here. Well, yeah, it's just, when you think of a thingy, it's just American football all the time. Where's the variety? Even if it's just like baseball or something. Like, you know, what is it? Um, open heart, in it? We get to have a couple of chapters to do with that. It's baseball, like, you know. Well, I think they'd find it hard to do with that, to be honest, with what people want nowadays, with, like, romance. How would it, that all tie in, you know? Would it be where... You meet the person and you don't know they're actually a sports star, and you find out in a few chapters that they actually are, you know? Yeah, Yeah, um, you know, both of you, like what you were saying about wanting to see like a fantasy type of book or a sports book for the first time, because there is not really a sports book in the app, like an actual sports book, that would be something that would be nice to see. I just don't want it to be a football one. No. So, I mean, look, like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though I don't like sports, as long as it's not that, then I'll yeah. be content. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Pixelberry actually did comment. I don't know. It's probably nothing. I'm probably looking over it again, like I always do. But on Pixelberry's lately, one of the things is, just somebody said, oh, where's more sports book? And Pixelberry actually commented saying, uh, soccer, American football, <laughs> hockey, or baseball. I thought, interesting. Probably looking over it, but it's quite interesting that I did say that, you know, but, you know, yeah. I'm probably just overthinking it, but I really do hope we get to see more sports book. I mean, obviously, I don't think we'll get one this year. If we do, it'll be rushed, but, you know, it is the hope. You know, I don't think it's overthinking it, because sometimes Pixelberry may be leaving, comp- they may be leaving clues when they come. Yeah. So, it's like, like it yeah. is something... Yeah, because I, mean, I noticed on the po- could happen, really. Yeah, because that with a poppy thing, isn't it? Like, like I'm gonna say as much as I can about that bit. But like, but with the uh, when they first started releasing it and that, when Pixel were like, oh, p- people asking, oh, we're gonna get time with Poppy and stuff like that. They were all commenting, will she become a love interest at some point? Which she actually does, and they kept commenting on all that, and it's like little niggles and little bits to say, oh, look, teasing and stuff like that. But I found it. I obviously, I think both of you know I overthink things, but it's interesting that they didn't actually comment by yes or no. They just said what book, what kind of sports book, not yes or no. I thought that's quite interesting to be honest to say that. But I'd, I honestly believe though, if they did do that, they'd find it hard to sell. Really, I think most of like what you guys are saying is really interesting. I would love to see a sci-fi book. I, I really, yeah. really like it. I, I would love to see it because that's something that I, I know it's not very popular um, with the fan base, and I get it, but I have a soft spot for sci-fi. Like, I've always been interested in that. 
And even like the games that I play, like they also, um, like I play a lot of other sci-fi games as well. So I would love to see something like that in the Choices app, but I realistically do not think that it's going to happen. But maybe I, I would be okay with something that's like maybe a little bit sci-fi, like Perfect Match was and Endless Summer. Yeah. Maybe I think as well. I guess. Yeah. As well, what I will say is there's, there's an element to that as well. This might be off topic. I think Brandon knows this. In Half Human, where we're actually, it's kind of a, I think some of the chapters are sports book and it's a sci fi like book. Sports, half sci fi. Yeah, it is, honestly. And that's it, actually quite a good book. It's, because it's like, I'm just trying to remember, trying to reference stuff. It. It's, it's, I don't know what the right reference is, to be honest. Um, it's like, uh, you know those type of yeah. have you seen those spy books where it's like half where they're living two lives, so yes. like they're living their social life and then they're living this this action life, kind of like Power Rangers, I guess, where they're li- yeah. school kids living their lives and then they're, they're fighting evil as well at the same time, kind of like that. Yeah, I think as well with book two, I'm not going to spoil the biggest spoiler in that book, but it's not the best step out there. We I know of this, and I think Brendan and the when he comes back will agree. But with half human. I think the best way to describe it. Uh, no, I can't explain it because there's a big spoiler in book two, isn't it? When we find out something, don't we? About yeah. maybe ourselves, you know. Which I thought, wow, I didn't expect that. But yeah, there's more books like that. I do agree with you. Actually. We need more books like that. I don't mean like car fume but supernatural. Yeah, we need to do uh, what's called. I think we need to do some like live viewing sessions. So like all of us get into like a Discord. So I can do it on my yeah. computer, and we just we just take Astra through Dream Zone and other apps, just show her what we mean. Yeah, because yeah, um, I actually I I've, I've tried out Dream Zone, and I plan to and well, I'm, I'm going to be checking it out again. And I also um, installed Whisper very recently because um, an urban like he. He recommended that on Twitter, so I'm probably so I'm gonna be checking that out. And I also started um, checking out uh, scripts more. Scripts used to be called secrets, and they're very LGBT friendly. So um, I've yeah. been mostly kind of checking that out, out like now. But I do I, I do like Dream Zone though. I like Prometheus, and I'm gonna finish that. And I want to finish. 